Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff and Richard Foster are with me here in the studio. And very shortly, we'll be going out to Hamden to speak to Kerry Pollock, our reporters out there ahead of Scotland's friendly against Poland. If you like the content on a day-to-day -day basis here on PLZ Soccer, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you can and hit the bell and you'll get all the uh, notifications that you require on our unique content. We've got some really good interviews coming up and we've got uh, some existing ones as well. One-to-ones with Pat Nevin, Gordon Strachan in there. James McPake's been chatting to us. And uh, more importantly, over the next couple of weeks, we've got some really good one-to-ones that I think uh, will excite you. And we'll have Richard Foster's dream team still to extract that out of him. Um, so it'll be good to see the best 11 players he's played with. So, uh, with all that in mind, we're going to focus first and foremost, Ruffy, on Scotland against Poland, which is a friendly, um, albeit we would have liked to have been playing in the big playoff against Ukraine. It's not possible. Um, so it's Poland in a friendly. Yeah, and there are a lot of uh, important games to come up. Obviously, the big one, uh, whenever it's decided, we play Ukraine. So it's good to keep the momentum going. You know, I wouldn't get too dis disappointed if we never won the game. Good performance would be good. An introduction of maybe two or three players that we haven't seen before, just to see what they're like at that level. But uh, no, it'll be a good night for the fans, particularly I think Poland are a very good side. We've seen them a couple of times and uh, they've got a good history in this cup, so it'll be a good challenge. Yeah, the downside though is uh, I think Steve Clark has come out again and said, you know, OK, the game against Ukraine has been pushed back to June, but even he feels as if that might be unlikely. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no way to tell definitively when it's going to be. Um, you know, the situation there seems to kind of get worse by the day and, you know, football takes a back seat, doesn't it? It becomes kind of inconsequential, really. Um, obviously, they'll need to set a date for it, but that, I, I would imagine it won't be definite and it'll be kind of, let's play it by ear and, and see what happens. You hope things get resolved really quickly, not for the football, obviously, for the, for the country itself. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, these games come along and they're important for Scotland to, as Ruffy mentioned there, the, the kind of the momentum to keep going, I think there's a you know it's a decent squad they've got. Um, obviously they're missing a few players, but it'll be a good test against Poland. Yeah, um, Kerry Pollock is out there at Hamden for us. Uh, Kerry, I think we are all looking forward to it. A friendly, there's a nice momentum about uh, Scotland at the moment, and I, I think we're hoping that you get a bit of a crowd there alongside you in the press box and around the seats in Hamden. Yeah, Peter. Well, Steve Clark did say yesterday that he's encouraged every member of the Tartan Army to come out and support the team tonight against <coughs> Poland. You see the, the crowd and the atmosphere at the last two competitive matches at Hamden is fantastic. The players love it when the, when the crowd are there and right behind them. It is great to see so many people coming. Uh, I know there's still a few tickets left, so the more people that can, can come, the better, because obviously we're raising money for a, a really good, well, not, not a good cause, but a cause that, that we should be raising money for because the situation out there is, is horrendous and it doesn't seem to be getting better, which is, which is bad news for everybody. Yeah, well done to the SFA for helping uh, with, uh, of course, Ukraine uh, with funds from this match. Of course, we're hoping there's a good crowd. What are we expecting? And hopefully with a half-decent night, Kerry, there might be some people just walking up there to try and get tickets as well. Yeah, well, I think around roughly 30,000 plus here tonight, Peter. So if Scotland can get that positive result, this place will be rocking. Yeah, over and above that, uh, there's a few new faces in there, Kerry. Uh, two or three that I think maybe uh, they'll be getting the butterflies, hoping that the manager gives them a run out, maybe even a start. Well, hopefully we can see some new faces tonight, Peter, with players such as Andy Robertson, Lyndon Dykes and David Marshall out of the squad for the game. It might be the perfect opportunity for the likes of Craig Halkett, who's had 32 appearances for Hearts this season. Perhaps Sunderland's Craig Stewart, Ross Stewart sorry, to come on. He's scored 22 goals for his club. That's averaging around a goal every other game. Or it might be St Johnston's Xander Clark to make his appearance for Scotland tonight. Yeah, uh, I'm just picking up on that point that Kerry made there. I mean, Ross Stewart is somebody that's been banging the goals in. So again, you know, I think your old teammate Steve Archibald mentioned we're, we're low on strikers of quality. Maybe this is a perfect chance for him. Yeah, and I think we're all hoping, you know, he may be falling into the, the Dykes carry-on, you know, where started at Queen of the South, you know, and nobody knew much about him. I mean, I've said this on the show, we actually tried to get him at Partick Thistle. 
uh, <laughs> before he got his first move. You know, we, we put in a bid and it wasn't accepted. But look what he is now, you know, and Ross Stewart might be the same. We, we saw what he can do at Ross County. He's now down in England. You know, I'm sure he's matured a lot. I'm sure he's a different different player if he's playing down there. So he might fall into that category and hopefully he does. He comes up and he's a he's, he's a different player and he, and, he, and he can rise to the level. Yeah. And Kerry, I know a few mums and dads who've managed to get tickets <clears> taking their kids along to this one, hoping that they can see the great Robert Lewandowski. We have our doubts. We don't think he's going to make an appearance because they don't want him injured for the big game on Tuesday but for us it's all about that confidence of maybe a win Definitely Peter and if they can get that positive result it sets them up nicely for the game against either Wales or Austria next week yeah, looking forward to it. It comes up on Tuesday. Good luck to Kerry. Uh, she's going to be a reporter there. She'll get all the aftermatch interviews from Hamden, Scotland against Poland. Thanks to Kerry Pollock out there at the National Stadium. Um, fingers crossed on this one. I, I'd love to see uh, Robert Lewandowski uh, strutting his stuff, but uh, I have my doubts. They've got uh, Sweden or the Czech Republic in their playoffs, so... He's such a great striker. You just love to see him out there. To say that you've seen him, it's like when when Ruffy and I are watching Messi in the in the new camp, you know, dismantling a team in the Champions League. It's just great to say that you've seen him play. Yeah, of course. Like, you know, um, Ruffy spoke about earlier. He's he's one of the best in the world at the moment. Um, in terms of striker, he probably is the best striker in the world at the moment. Um, he goals, he scores, he gets, he seems to get better every year. Um, fantastic player for for both club and country and. Great for the fans if they get a chance to see him tonight, but also great for the, for the, the players to play against him. You know, you remember that the, the, the night you played against, you know, possibly one of the be the greatest <coughs> strikers ever. Um, so, like I say, for both fans and players, it would be nice if he's out there. I can't see them risking him right enough because of the big game that they've got um, later on, well, next week, isn't it? But um, but yeah, it would be good for him to come out and, and make an appearance, but. Hopefully, um, hopefully Scotland can get a positive result regardless. Yeah, I, I know, Ruffy, any international, you always looked forward to uh, joining up with the squad. I think anybody, even the new uh, faces in the Scotland squad, will certainly be welcome with open arms because Manchester United's midfielder come defender, Scott McTominay, has said there's, there's a real feel-good factor in the squad. Yeah, of course. Like Everybody's got their own different things going on at club level whether that's good or bad but as I say when you come with, with, with Scotland now we've got that, that mentality now that it's enjoyable everybody wants to be here there's no bad eggs there's nobody who's bringing the, the standard of training down because they, they don't want to or they can't be bothered being here it's not like that at all it's very much a happy environment and, and for us long may it stay that way Do you remember a couple of years ago Ruffy <coughs> we were talking about the fact that some people didn't even want to be in a Scotland yeah. squad yeah, and I, and I always tell the story about the Knott's Forest boys who always loved coming up. You know, it didn't matter where they were in London or playing Manchester in an away game, they would all, they'd all meet up and go to the airport together. And I always tell the story that Archie Gamble told me that they were all in the London airport and they were all waiting in the the, the flight being called and they were playing cards about a happy bit. They fun in that, and the loser had to carry everybody's bags to the plane. <laughs> John Robertson lost the bet, and there was a photo of him with like five bags all over his shoulder, nothing trunging to the, the departure lounge. But they were all desperate to get up, and when they met up on the Sunday night, it was always good part. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> could, do John, could do with John Robertson, but um, well, there's a good one. Hugh Scott says, Peter, who would be your captain tonight with uh, Robbo missing? Um, it's Callum McGregor or Kieran Tierney for Hugh Scott. Uh, there's a few candidates in there. Um, I think he's he's probably hit the nail on the head with the, the two favourites for me as well. I think, you know, there's been a lot spoke about Tierney. I think, can I shout him for him for to, to be the captain at Arsenal? Eh, the captain at Arsenal. And I think, you know, when, when you watch the way he plays, he's certainly the kind of guy that leads by example. You know, he gives everything every time he plays for, for club and country. And I think he's, he's, he seems like he's, he's that, got that mentality of a captain, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, if it was me, I'd plump for uh, McGregor. I think he leads by example in the middle of the park. Uh, thanks to Michael Crooks, who says, if Lewandowski uh, doesn't play, Scotland will win. Um, so we'll flip that <laughs> over. If he does play, <laughs> then nay luck. <laughs> Um, but um, are you hell bent on picking a captain? Do you like somebody who's a leader, Ruffy? No, well, the, the captains were there for everyone. It was Willie Miller, and then it was Graham Souness and we Archie. You know, so no, I, I think a captain should have respect. You know, if he's going to 
pull you up in the park or something. You you know he's pulling you up for a point. You know that you've got to improve your game and lift your game. So, no, I think it is. But the candidates you're talking about, I wouldn't have a problem either of the two of them. Yeah, absolutely. As long as we get a positive result. Um it's difficult to call it because you never know the strength of what Poland are going to put out there uh, tonight. I do hope they get round about 30,000. Uh, some people might just look and say friendlies can't be bothered, but because there's that feel-good factor, I'd love to think there was around about that or more. No, I think 30,000 in there is feasible enough. You know, I think the 15,000, it's a bit of a damp squid for me, but, uh, you know, I think the players will respond. And if the fans are, are on board, you know, it's a great stadium to be in when everybody's right behind you and if you're winning, even better. So so let's hope they can get something out of the game. Yeah, here's a good point. I was just thinking about there um, from your own perspective, Richard, I'll ask Ruffy, but you and I are going to be, well, I might not be completely blown out of the water, but I think you might yourself. How many of the world's greatest players have you seen play? And I'm talking about absolute legends down through the years. Is there, is there three or four that you can rhyme off? Have you seen Messi and Ronaldo? No. <laughs> no. Oh, so it's not, really actually, good, not really a good question for you, is it? <laughs> you I'm get out much? Blow, blow anyone away. I'm going to <laughs> underwhelm everyone. Um, no, I mean, even off the top of my head, they're probably the best player I've been on a pitch with. And that's probably the only reason I would have seen them play would have been Aguero at Atletico Madrid. Um, That's a Rooney, good call. Rooney, Man United. Yeah. Um, but in terms of watching games, not being at actual physical games, then very, very poor in that front, I'm afraid. Yeah, Ruffy. Uh, well, I was fortunate enough to play against Maradona when he was only 17. I was going to say, I watched you know, it. And my story to go with Maradona, uh, I think Ian Monroe, I don't know if you remember Ian Monroe, played with oh. Rangers, and he uh, marked Maradona that day, and uh, he got a video to commemorate his contribution to, to Mark and Maradona yeah. and when I was at Hibs I asked him for a loan of it to see it because I couldn't remember much about the game and he gave me the, the it would have been VHS or Beta Max or whatever it was for you, you know it Max. yeah and I took it <laughs> I took it home to watch it and foolishly I left it in and the, the kids uh, oh. taped over Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs yeah. so he's never ever seen that <laughs> clip of Mark and Maradona it would have gone game. but no Maradona sticks out that day and if you get a chance to see the clip where he, he takes on about five or six players in the halfway line it's just yeah. a joy to watch well I've seen Pele play mm -hmm. um, seen Maradona <coughs> uh, Messi Ronaldo as well uh, and Gert Muller mm -hmm. so that's not a bad shout is yep. it Ruffy yeah, I think, no I think you're up there with the, the best of our Pele, era anyway Pele or Maradona who was better uh, Pele yeah yeah um, I'm sure there are people who are now going to kick the living daylights of me on this feed for My that. My dad but would agree with you. He thinks Pelly's the greatest ever. Yeah, absolutely. You don't you, you don't play in a World Cup final. Um, Eighteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. You don't play Scored in a World twice. Yeah, it's just not happening. You know, um, absolutely fantastic. Ian Doherty says George Best for Northern Ireland at Hamden. Great shout! I actually saw George Best in a hip strip at Easter Road, Ruffy. Yeah, um, I actually saw George Best in a shower at Hibs. <laughs> 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 so there you are. We've now moved. We've now moved the chat on dramatically, Richard. Um, but nevertheless, it's always good when <coughs> you get a chance to see some special players. And and, and just while well, we're on the Scotland thing, and I, and I should have mentioned it yesterday because more often than not, Ruffy, I love um, just paying tribute to uh, great footballers down through the years. Um, and people that obviously we've lost, sadly. Uh, yesterday was the 27th anniversary of Davy Cooper passing away. More often than not, I've got it. Yeah, I, 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 I watched it yesterday. Uh, just a, a little thing came up in my timeline and I thought, I'm going to put that in the script and I completely mm -hmm. forgot all about it. And I think it's only right and proper I mention it. Yeah, yeah uh, I saw that last night when I got home as well and I was going, wow, I didn't mean to talk about that because we've, we've talked about it hundreds of times, you know, the, what, he, what he meant to the game, what he meant to Rangers, the fans and everything, what kind of guy he was, you know, great stories uh, and everybody's got great stories and it is incredible that, that that distance in time has passed by. Yeah, and the one thing that sticks in my mind, I never tire of telling people though, Richard, is um, the fact that... Uh, Coop scored probably one of the best old firm goals I've seen uh, throughout all the years, um, which is basically the driver of a cup final. I mean, he, he absolutely, Sandy Jarman scored a screamer for Rangers. 
And then Coop decided to score one even better because <laughs> he threw the ball to him. And when he got the ball, he bumped it over three Celtic players' heads, took it on his chest, side-footed it into the back of the net and walked away as if it was the norm. <laughs> you know, he walked away as if it was a five-a-side game. It was such a great goal. Yeah, uh, you know, you're talking about watching great players. Even seeing players of that quality do magical things as if they're, they're easy to them. You know, that's as a player, you're in awe of watching other guys do that. You know, as a fan, you, you know, you must be buzzing when you're just seeing these guys. And, and probably that, that celebration, I would imagine, was very fitting for the goal he scored because he'd he done special things quite a lot of the time, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. When, when I, and the funny thing is, you know, it's like, Ruffy, sometimes if you're a football geek and you love, um, you know, players and goals and things like that, uh, when I joined STV first time around, you could just go into the library and and look through all the classic games and things like that and some of the stuff that he, he did with the ball for Rangers uh, and and the guy we usually have on here on a Thursday Tam he would have started a 10 minute Motherwell, tribute yeah. to him wouldn't he for Motherwell yeah yeah. and, and any time I played Rangers at Ibrox when the team lines come in the team lines still come in opposition team lines still come in to dress them yeah? yeah and I always remembered an hour before kickoff, I think it yeah was. I, I always remember you would have a look at it and you'd look down you know, frantically, if it was, it was Cooper that was down the bottom, you'd be like, oh no, him and Derry Johnson, you know. the Derry Ritchie. The, no, but the, the Davy Cooper's delivery into Derek Johnson, oh. you know, Derek wouldn't even have to run, you know, but pinpoint, you know, and that's a, the kind of player went outside of the foot. He was a way, way ahead, uh, everybody, free kicks outside of the foot, you know, curling balls and all that, and he was, he was just a wonderful player. Yep, absolutely. Um, I should have mentioned that yesterday, but listen, at the end of the day, um, he's gone, but he's not forgotten. Uh, great man, and also, I think the good thing is, some players are worthy of a statue, and if you go down to Hamilton, just at the opposite end of Strathclyde Park, you, you see a statue of him in the grounds there as well, which is nice. I didn't know that. I honestly didn't know that. Is that right? Well, Hamilton's not an area that I frequent, but that's fantastic. It should be. Yeah. And, and round about that area, you know, there's boxers, statues as well. Yeah, and absolutely. The, the wee communities, I think that's fantastic idea. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Mary Hill no opened her eyes yet. No, have I not got anything up in Gasket no, Road? It's only a matter of time. What, <laughs> the last the worst thing about, Road. The worst, I was just about to say, but the worst thing about your, your statue <laughs> is his statue outside Fir Hill. If, if any woman walk past, the, the statue will go like that. <laughs> Start moving. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ruffy, I digress. Uh, oh, score tonight? Oh, I'd, I'd be happy with one each. Yeah? Yeah, just a positive result. Yeah. Richard? Um, I'm, the result doesn't really concern me, just a positive performance. Mm -hmm. I think you can you can play well and lose to a better side. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go 2-2. Two, 2-2? Two. Two, two? Oh, 2-2 two, two would be great, by the way, because then you'd have a, more than a few goals. Are you happy to see Ross Stewart getting a run out? That would be nice. Yeah, I think, you know, he's very, very similar to London Dykes. As tall, I think he's quicker. Um, I've played with Ross Stewart. Technically, he's, he's, he's good. Um, I think he could actually, and um, you know, I might eat my words here, almost be a better version of London Dykes, if, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah, from what, just playing with him, works hard, um, good touching around the box, can score goals, good in the air, obviously, because he's, he's you know, six feet five. Um, but he's rapid once he gets his, once he opens up his legs, and I think you know I, I hope he really does well. He's he's obviously flying for Sunderland, and I hope he can bring that into the national team because I think if he has a good couple of games, he could stay in the, in, in the setup. Yeah, wow, high praise, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only remember him from Ross County, and he scored his fair amount of goals there. He was always a handful when, whenever we played them, you know. So I, I'm hoping he has matured and got better as most players do when they get out to England and they're playing with bigger player, maybe not Sunderland, but yeah. I would like to think the level he's playing at and scoring goals bring the confidence to the, the national side. Yeah, I um, hope the Tartan Army come out in great numbers tonight. Just on that point, uh, before you were playing, were you a boy that maybe your mum and dad would take you to see uh, Scotland? Were you a fan of Scotland? Uh, I never, I never went to any Scotland games. I never really went to much football. You know, I was, I lived in Elgin, which yeah. <laughs> it's quite far to travel to go, to go to a Scotland game. Um, but no, I never really went to to much football. Um, would you have watched Scotland though if they were on the telly? I probably would have. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's where kind of even people my age kind of you miss out. There's way more football on the television than <coughs> you see far more. 
Um, but you know, I still I used to used to love watching the the Italian football on, on a Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was kind of you know that was that was the football I watched, obviously to to begin with. Um, but to be honest, you're out playing football, you know that much. You never really had time to, to sit in the house and watch games. Yeah, you're talking about uh, Go Labs so yeah. with uh, James Richardson. Yeah. Ruffy and I were going to sit a cocktail down there and a Knickerbocker glory just to make <laughs> you feel at home on this show. Um, I don't know about you, Ruffy. I mean, uh, obviously you played from such an early age, but most of the people uh, that I, uh, you know, my mates growing up, we were absolutely avid Scotland fans as you know obviously David oh. Moyes and myself and Kenny and our other pals we would follow them to tournaments you know we'd, that's how we, we enjoyed ourselves we wanted to get, uh, you know just soak it all up and get the, the holiday away as well yeah I think it's different what age you're at you know obviously at the age you're talking about me and Richard would be playing football for somebody yes you no know, you were playing your own like amateur or whatever and then the chance to go and see Scotland would be an added bonus yeah you know, when I was young 14 I just remember watching Scotland England games you know that they were the big games that I remember you know because I was never uh, a follower of any particular club you know so it was international games that I think and I remember my, some of the older guys uh, who, who listened in might remember I remember my first game my dad took me to was Scotland versus Austria at Hamden and I think it was 4-1 and the game was abandoned and I can't even remember why the game was abandoned I'm yeah. sure somebody will let us know. Yeah, um, that's an interesting one, Ruffy. I can't remember that myself. Um, but I, I absolutely loved following Scotland uh, everywhere, uh, right across uh, Europe, tournaments, World Cups. And, uh, you, well, we didn't get to many. In fact, I don't think we got to any European Championships when I was growing up. Never I think me. the first one I can remember was 1992 mm. um, with uh, Gary McAllister and, and mm -hmm. McStay. But when you go to World Cup finals, they were just a second. Yeah, competition absolutely. That's what I like about you, arrogant <laughs> heed. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, Steve McNeil says, I played against uh, <coughs> David Moyes when he played for Easter Craigs. Uh, and also, quite a lot of people talking about uh, tuning into games. Uh, Thomas McDougall says, Hi, I've just tuned in and watching from a, uh, from a wee run uh, to Burnt Island, which is good because Thomas is like so many now, Ruffy, um, because if you download the PLZ Soccer app, you can actually go into the live football show and you can see the programme live on your phone, so you're not going to miss it, um, as well as obviously being able to watch it later on. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people getting it out at work. You know, yeah, absolutely. Take the foreman, stay away from the foreman, whatever you do. <laughs> Lock yourself in a cupboard somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, um, to be perfectly honest with you, yeah, fingers crossed we, we get a positive result tonight. I love uh, watching Scotland. Uh, a couple of things I want to read out some messages, Ruffy, obviously that uh, lots of people who have downloaded the app know that if you go into submissions, you can actually post a message to us and we'll get that on the show and try and read out as many as we can. Of course, there's messages live in the YouTube feed as well. And here's one that says, um, Aussie fans filling the stadium for the old firm game in Sydney. Uh, Sydney, why are fan clubs not getting behind it in 2022? If Dave King cared about Rangers, he would give them the three million pounds and still let them go to Sydney. That would be six million uh, instead of making share prices lower by increasing shares. Um, that's going to rumble on, yeah. Ruffy. That battle between, you know, sections of the Rangers fans, I find totally and utterly bewildering at the moment. Yeah, there's another. And the board. Yeah, there's another issue going on behind the scenes, and I think we all know what it is. It's Dave King and the the supporters are trying to unite together and make it very difficult for the the Rangers board to come up with the right decision or do the right decision. But I, I always think you've got to go with the majority. You know, I, I don't know what the percentage is of Rangers fans who don't want them to go to Australia, but I think it would be in the minority. So, what for, is the reason? What is the what is the real reason? I think it started off with saying it was Angie's homecoming, right, in Australia. Yeah. I think that's how it started. Yes, yes. But surely, if, if you're a, if you're one of the Rangers, you know, if you're um, putting money into the club, you know, then you, you know you need to kind of help yourselves as well because you, you know it's not just an endless pot of gold that you've got. So if you can do something to generate three million pounds worth, then surely that's got to be a good thing. And fans taking umbrage, that you know the board 
trying to earn money for the club. I, I find that quite strange. Yeah, well, remember, by the way, you're trying to inject logic into the show, where, uh, right, okay. whereas the the fans that are making these complaints um, have no logic. There's a there's a small element who just basically have all things hatred of Rangers and Celtic playing together. That you know these sets of fans, because let's not forget, some Celtic fans don't want this to happen yeah. either. Um, so you've got that element. You've then got uh, a, an element who feel as if there's no communication uh, between the board and Rangers and they don't want to see Rangers and Celtic playing in a friendly over there. And then, as you mentioned there, and Ruffy highlighted the whole Ange coming home, they feel itself has been hijacked. And then there's all sorts of other, what I call, stories going about, about who's earning what. Um, and then the usual old firm um, coming together uh, is another bit of the, the argument. But if you pander to them, you're then in the gutter. It's as simple as that. I think you've got to look at it and say it's a commercial deal. Not only will it bring a lot of money for each club, but it's a chance to put that brand further afield. Of course it is. I mean, you know, everyone talks about how big club Rangers and Celtic are, and they are. They're massive clubs. You know, I can remember one year when I was at Aberdeen getting caught on holiday, and the, you know, the, uh, the Rangers North American Convention, and there was thousands and thousands of fans there. So they're huge, huge clubs. But you know, in order to keep those fans coming in and to get new fans, you need to kind of broaden your horizons a little bit and go out there and, and play these games across there. Because how often will fans who live in Australia get to see the, the old firm? You know, never. So um, the, ch the two teams going over there, they'll use it as, tra uh, as a training camp. Um, the game will be played. It will generate a lot of money. It will generate a lot of revenue. Uh, you, know, you know, looking at it probably kind of from the outside and... and being more objective about it, I cannot see what the big what the big who has. Yeah, uh, just out of curiosity, were you in Vegas at the time? Uh, no, it was Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah. I just get that vision of you playing for Aberdeen at the time. Ruffy opens the door. <laughs> <laughs> there's about five thousand bears. It was, there. it was very similar to that. It was, we were kind of walking down, kind of round by the falls, and you just seen this crowd of people coming towards you, and I was like, no, nah, I can't be. And then thinking, oh no, and just kind of like sharp left turn. Away, away <laughs> Brilliant, Ruffy. Um, here's a good one, which I hope you're going to um, obviously um, fulfil this obligation, Ruffy. And I think it'll be to that camera over there. It's a it's a straight look down the camera yeah. for you again, okay? okay um, which is basically, could Alan wish my mum, Martha Webb from Australia, a happy 90th birthday? She never misses a show. I kid her on, she's the oldest overseas viewer. Now, at 90, I haven't heard of many that would beat Martha. No. Um, so, um, Martha Webb, it's her 90th birthday, Ruffy. Do the business. Uh, what can I say, Martha? Uh, I'd like to wish you a happy birthday. I'm sure you're going to have a great day with all your family. And like, let's hope you have many, many more. Have a fantastic time and keep watching the show. Honestly, that, you're an absolute pro, by the way. Just, uh, he was, you, you know what you were like there? <laughs> you, you, were like, you were like Jess Yates from Stars on Sunday, which is a programme you'll not remember, no. Richard. But it was just fantastic, Ruffy. Well done. Um, also, uh, can I show you this little photograph that came up, um, which is uh, basically from uh, Martin McGrath, who is from Hamilton. Uh, and he's out there at the moment. Um, I think helping uh, quite a lot of the Ukrainian families who've fallen on difficult times. Uh, well done to Martin. He's uh, from Hamilton originally, uh, and I think that's a great gesture. And he's out there flying the uh, lion rampant and helping out the Ukrainian families, which is brilliant. Well done to you, Martin. I'm so glad can that I, you sent that picture to us. Can I add the Dnipro Hib Supporters Club, who are actually over there as well? They fundraised, or they were fundraising before this ever happened every year for the people of Dnipro and they're over there just now. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Brilliant. Well done. Uh, good one, Ruffy. Good to read that out. And also uh, quite a lot of uh, other messages, which I'll, I'll try and read out a little later on in the programme, but it's always good uh, to hear uh, exactly where you are. If you're celebrating something, then uh, we'll try and give you a, a mention as much as possible. So... Uh, with that in mind, we hope that uh, Scotland can get a good positive result ahead of the friendly, which will come up on Tuesday against Wales or Austria. The loser uh, will play Scotland in a friendly. Um, apart from that, uh, is there any players that you, you think 
should have been in Ruffy, just out of curiosity. I know Anthony Ralston was speaking yesterday, he said he was a little bit surprised yeah. that he wasn't involved. Yeah, I think I'd have been surprised as well. I think the introduction that he had, he, he did particularly well, and I think he's one for the future. I think he should have been kept involved, uh, as the boy Parson has been. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're the future. You know, you've, you've got to keep the, the unit together. And uh, he would have, there's no doubt that he'd been disappointed. I'd have been disappointed. Uh, even more disappointed if Xander Clark doesn't get a cap tonight. Uh, I think he should be getting introduced as well. But no, it's an odd one. I'd like maybe to get the reason for that. And, and the manager would probably say, well, I know what he can do. You know, I've seen everything I can do. I just I don't need to see him in this one. But I would be disappointed if I was him. Yeah, I'd be. You know, Richard, you've played that right back role. I mean, he's he's been consistent and he's playing at the top level. <laughs> well, he's for me, he's the best. He's the best right back in Scotland. Uh, Scottish right back at the moment. I think Stephen O'Donnell is in there ahead of him, who has been in and out with the Motherwell team. Now I know Ralston has been in and out with the Celtic team, but we're talking about a vastly superior squad here. Um, you know, we, guys like Juranovic playing ahead of him. Um, at times, but you know, Ange Postigal likes to rotate his squad, so a lot of the times it's just a squad rotation that he misses out. But anytime he comes in, he does well. I think this season he's been fantastic. Asked to kind of play that, you know, going into midfield. Now that would bring me out in a cold sweat, <laughs> asking me to go and to receive the ball in the middle of the pitch. But he's he's kind of taken to it really well, and he's looked really good, and he's he's actually thrived. His assists this season, I, I don't know what the exact <coughs> number are, but you know, very very high. And I just think he's playing, when he plays, he plays so well. And to me, he was, you know, I would have, if you're taking one or the other, I'd have left Stephen O'Donnell out. Now, I know Stephen O'Donnell has done well for Scotland and everyone keeps saying, oh, he's never let us down, which he hasn't. But, you know, you, you're, you want guys who are in form, and I know these are friendlies, but you want guys in that squad who are in form, who are playing well. And at the moment, Ralston is, and Stephen O'Donnell isn't. So I'd have had him in there ahead, ahead of him. And also, you look at Parson, fantastic player, fantastic talent. But he's not been playing. Yeah. So you know you get you get guys in there um, <coughs> the, that have been playing and like you say been playing at Celtic, been playing at a high level, and he, he misses out. It's it's a real strange decision for me. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Ruffy, it's a, again another developing story. But we thought we were on a shoe in here with the UK and Ireland for Euro 2028. The, the Turkish uh, FA have come in with a late bid to host it as well. Uh, Russia came in as well, but uh, I don't think they're going to get any chance at all. Uh, in fact, I think UEFA are, at this moment, if they haven't done already, about to sus suspend uh, Russia, uh, which will kind of a, negate any possibility of them coming in with any kind of bid. They did put a cheeky one in yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that's uh, that's the old one in it. When you used to go into a manager and ask for a transfer, there was a massive big bin sitting in the corner, and you just used to roll up the bit of paper and just throw it in it. I would like to think FIFA have done that as well with Russia. When that bin bid came in, it was just rolled up in a piece of paper and tossed somewhere because they're never going to get it. You know, the way things are going just now. But I would like to think we would get it because we were going for the World Cup, and somebody told us, "No, don't go for the World Cup because you won't get it." So we've sort of taken a step back and went for the Euros. So I think we've got a good shout. Weird there, Ruffy. I never used to get them a bit of paper. The manager usually writes it out for me and forces me to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the one thing I'm actually gobsmacked at is he's been so hard hitting about the Russians because <coughs> I'll tell you right now, good luck to you, Ruffy. Because if you see if you see anybody with a with a with a bowler hat and uh, an umbrella, uh, you never know these days, um, Ruffy. I hope you're, you're safe and well when you get on a train. Um, anyway. <laughs> Ruffy, hard-hitting uh, with regards to Russia, but I think everybody, I speak for everybody, and certainly in the Western uh, bloc at this moment, uh, I don't think there's any chance they're going to get a, a sniff at Euro 2028. Scottish Premiership, looking forward to it. Going to talk about some of the teams and some of the news that's emerged, um, even though the domestic football is on hold at the moment. But I've got to ask you to... <sighs> What's happening? I mean, honestly, you've blown it big time, Thistle. We have, we have, and I think we've, you know, we've kind of, we've worked so hard to get into a position where we're, you know, we're looking up the way, we're thinking we could go and catch Kilmarnock, um, we have to go and beat Morton away, um, and then Hamilton at home, and we just never turned up. I think in the Morton game, it was, we looked tired, we looked a bit leggy, and then the Hamilton, the Hamilton just ran over the top of us, and I think, we, you know, the, the thought, the squad was thin, you know, with injury, with COVID, <coughs> um, and... You know, it was also a, a poor performance, and I just we haven't done enough in in the last three games, and it's kind of when you work so hard all season to put yourself in a good position to, to let it slide the way we have so dramatically in the last three games is is, is pretty disappointing. But 
we need to kind of dust ourselves off and, and we're still in a fight for, for playoffs and I, and I do still believe that from where we were last season, the promoted team, I do still believe that being in the playoffs is a positive season for us. Um, and it's 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 easy to forget that because we were we were looking to be better than that. But um, we need to try and you know it's probably going to be between ourselves, Inverness and Wraith for that that final uh, two spots. And we need to make sure we're in there because it would be devastating to end the season in, in, in fifth position after being up there for so long. Yeah, even in fourth, it's, it's the dreaded number of games that you were talking about that you wanted to avoid. But I suppose now, suddenly, when the circumstances change, Ruffy, every Jags fan would say, well, if we've got to play a, a number of games to try and get it back into the Premier League, then so be it. Yeah, I mean, that's the way you have to look at it. You have to look at where you are and deal with it. You know, I'm sure the players will deal with it. You know, I, I, I agree with Richard. I think the games in hand looked fantastic on paper, but at the end of the day, they've come back to haunt us because by the time we got them, we had the suspensions and the COVID and everything, and the, obviously all the games were playing. I think I was looking the, at we'd played four. The teams had vastly improved as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think of all the teams we had a game in hand against, bar our growth, all the teams have changed manager because they were in a poor run and they've all improved. So, you know, we kind of got them <laughs> at the wrong time for us, certainly. Now, that's not an excuse, but it's, it, you know, the, the, all I think in this league, the top five teams started really well and the bottom five started slowly. But as the, the seasons went on, the bottom five teams have all improved their performance and the league's much tighter towards the end now is it what, than it was at the start. Yeah, Hugh says, Peter, it was Ruffy who uh, basically put the jinx on uh, uh, Party Thistle by saying only three teams can win the league now, quote, yeah, yeah, uh, I agree since that, yeah. then, uh, I don't think they've won a game, uh, so that kind of a sums it all up, anyway, um, you're still in with a shout, you've still got a chance. We're still in with a shout, we're after the Kilmarnock game of the weekend, we've got five games left, three are at home against like our Broth, Confirmland, you know, Wraith Rovers, teams that we want to be at home, you know, and I know the park's not up to scratch, but you would still rather play at home, I, I think. And it, it is financially as well. The playoffs as well are good for the clubs as well. You hate when I start talking about the fact. I'm not a financial person, but I, my eyes have been opened, you know, and, and everybody, you know, I keep saying to you, we were, at the beginning of the season, we were at a disadvantage to everybody else in that division because when the handout came, we get... 150,000. Everybody in that championship got half a million pounds. Yeah. So you can complain about budgets and who's got money and who got, hasn't it? Yeah. Every one of these teams had a 350,000 pound start on us. And you still have more money than the teams that you've been getting thumped by uh, in the last couple well, of weeks. Well, I know, but I'm not, I'm not making that as a point. <laughs> All I'm saying is you have to take it into consideration. <laughs> yeah, I have to take that into consideration. There, but no, but there's no defence. There's no defence. I don't know why did you games. mention it, Flynn? No, but I'm saying in the whole, I'm looking at a bigger picture. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, anyway, it's not worth arguing about. I do desperately hope that you still uh, can get in there for the playoffs. Um, I'll tell you one thing that everybody's getting excited about. At, at the buzz ahead of the, the potential three games, Derby matches coming up is incredible because... You know, Celtic and Rangers, we know the next game up is at Ibrox, it's Rangers against Celtic. Uh, when you look at the remaining games for them, Celtic have got, uh, Rangers have got Celtic, then they've got St Mirren, um, and then they'll have Celtic again, Hearts maybe, Dundee United maybe, Hibs, Aberdeen maybe. You know, I mean, I'm, I think we're being absolutely a little over optimistic to suggest Aberdeen are going to be in the, the top six come the split, but nevertheless, that's the type of games everybody's looking forward to. Rangers have got that. Then Celtic have got Rangers away. St Johnston at home. They will have Rangers at home as well. Um, and then it's maybe Aberdeen, Dundee United and Hearts. Um, there's going to be two out of the three that they anticipate will be at home with one away. Yeah, and I think you know a few years back people are were kind of you know talking about this the split and all oh, it's nonsense because the team that finished seventh can finish with more points. But this season is a fantastic season and it, it makes it exciting because that middle of the table, I think it's going <coughs> split by four points from from uh, third, uh, fourth to tenth or something like that. It's ridiculous the all the different connotations and the way it could it, way it could uh, pan out. But um, yeah, I mean, 
the main one is the league is who, who's going to win the league and I think I think the Celtic going away to Livingston a couple of weeks back and winning that I think that was huge I think if you were a Rangers fan watching that you're thinking that's this is where they're going to slip up because they hadn't won there in, in so long which was an incredible <coughs> start but I think them getting over that hurdle they seem to have just progressed and got better and better and I, you know the three points ahead and with Rangers still in the European ties I think Celtic are the favourites to win the league don't even ask me who's going to get in the top six because I, could, I couldn't pick that I couldn't pick that out of a hat <coughs> Yeah, I mean it's so difficult to call it uh, mm-hmm. this time around, but uh, I think th- I think the point that Richard makes is something that I think is is in the back of most Rangers fans' minds: is can that squad, you know, mm-hmm. literally try and produce every ounce of energy? I mean, I remember when we had um, Barry Ferguson on the show, and I w- we did a one to one also with um, uh, Lee McCulloch. Uh, just talking about that 2008 season as well, just trying to to play top flight mm-hmm. UEFA Cup, or as it's known now, the Europa League, and then going back to play these high-pressure games where there is no error allowed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be tough for Rangers. Yeah, and, and myself and Richard were talking about, you know, uh, how games are manufactured by what you've got on the bench. You know, and I think Rangers and Celtic now have a bench that can come on the park and, and win games, both of them. You know, but Rangers and Celtic are the same every year. If it, the, the next home game that Rangers have got, Rangers will win that. They'll believe that that's it. We're going to win the league. That's that's the way they think, you know. But, so you've really got to stop that momentum. You've got to go to Ibrox and get a draw and, and put a bit of doubt in there. Because for me, I mean, I've never been in a situation going for a league title or anything like that. But it seems to be momentum. You know, it seems to be confidence. And then you've got to have players who can handle the situation because it's going to be massive with the three games that are coming up. Yeah, the last thing any any of the either team wants is injuries to key players. I know Celtic are looking at Tom Rogic and wondering if he's going to be able to shake off that uh, challenge you got in the match against Ross County. Um, the manager says it's touch and go. Yeah, but it, you know you don't know the extent of it. You hope it's just a a knock, you know, which will you know a bit of bruising, a bit of swelling that that will calm down. You hope he's not done any damage to kind of any ligaments or that, because if it is, then then he won't be fit for for, for a couple of weeks yet anyway. Um, so you, like I say, you hope it's just a knock. I mean, it was just you know I, I didn't think it was a particularly poor challenge. I think you know kind of hard challenge wins the ball, and he's just awkward to. The, the kind of the way he takes the brunt of the of the the tackle, but yeah, he, Tom Rogic for me is when he's on form, he's the best player in the league. And if it's a big game, is this the game that Giovanni Van Bronckhorst must look to Aaron Ramsey and say you're in? I think he's had enough time now. I think he's had enough games, um, albeit he's played against Dundee a couple of times in the poor poor surfaces. Um, but I think this is the game where you you need someone of they'll need someone of his quality, especially in that midfield area, because I think. In the last Old Firm game, Celtic absolutely dominated in the middle of the pitch. Um, now they might still, even with Aaron Ramsey in the team, but you know you sign big players for big games, and, and they don't come bigger than this Old Firm game. Yeah, so sta- I think it's a stage of the season now where you look at the two teams, and you say to yourself, which players in, in either team can they now afford to miss? You know, which player? If you looked at God, if Morelos gets injured, well, I, I'll give you one right you know, now, Kent. And Kent, right, Kent. Uh, I think Kent's a match winner the way he's playing at the uh, moment. Celtic? At Celtic. McGregor. Good shout. Um, Jota. Jota, yeah, yeah, Jota for a big game. I agree with you, Richard. I think Jota mm-hmm. is one of those guys. Although some people would say, "Well, wait a minute," you know, James Forrest can come in. He's a big game player who absolutely understands that um, that that fixture. So there's probably a counter argument. But I, I I think I think Jota is certainly the, the the key player that could do the most damage. You get player when you when you're you know you play in teams and, and we've got it certainly with Scott Tiffany. But you get players that when they come back, they they get. Everybody else gets a lift, and I think Jota is that is that guy for Celtic, and, and Kent uh, is probably probably maybe more so Morelos. I think for Rangers is that guy where he all right he's in the team. We've got a good chance today, and everybody gets a wee lift from it. Um, granted, it never helped us on Tuesday with Tiff being back, but yeah, that's by and by. But you know, you do get these players, and I think Jota certainly for Celtic is that kind of special player where the rest of the squad will look at him and be like, they'll they'll get a little buzz from him being inside because see, you see the quality. See exactly what Richard says, and I've said it tons of times. When you're in a dressing room and you're looking for something special, you look about the dressing room and you look who that person is. Yeah. And sometimes you live one, sometimes you live two. Some, if you're lucky enough, you live three that are going to drag you through at the next level. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, there are uh, 700 lucky fans who are going to sample it, would you believe, at Ibrox because 
Uh, it looks as if they are, uh, are indeed going to be away fans at the match. The tickets are going on sale. Uh, I think it's for the uh, fans who missed out on the 15th of March 2020 when that game was cancelled. So I think they're going to be given priority. £52 for a ticket, um, which is incredible. <laughs> £52 for a ticket for uh, well, the match. We're not complaining about a price. What were we complaining about last week? Well, Somebody was paying 30 quid for... Yeah, that, that yeah, is. for the Scottish Cup semi-finals, it's fifty-two pound a ticket. The only one thing this is for the game on the, you know, I, I have to say, uh, Ruffy, that I think I can remember. I think I can remember. I think maybe one pound twenty. I can remember a game paying or two pound fifty for old firm games. One pound twenty and two pound fifty. Now it's fifty-two pounds to go and see an old firm game. It's mental, isn't it? It is mental. I mean, I'm going so far back now. I can remember just getting lifted out of the turnstile. Oh, so can I, by the way. I, you were twenty at the time, um, but uh, twenty stone. <laughs> nevertheless, I, I do remember that. I don't, I'm not. I don't think you would have get lifted over at all no. it was fantastic you could go and watch that many games it was it was unbelievable Ruffy wasn't it just yeah. getting out even if you were there with your mates you didn't actually have to be with a family member you just turn around to an it's older someday, person yeah. and say yeah. any chance of giving me a lift over mate yeah yeah, it's just amazing how things change, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just a, a little aside, we mentioned uh, David Cooper earlier on um, and remembering him. Uh, I think it would be remiss of me not to mention Jermaine Defoe, who announced that he's going to retire from football. Um, 57 caps, 20 goals, played for Rangers. A boy who I think will be absolutely delighted he walks away with a Premier League medal. Um, but over and above that, you know, West Ham, Bournemouth, Tottenham twice... Portsmouth, um, Sunderland and Rangers as well, and he was in the States. What a career. Ah, it's a fantastic career and, and what a player. I think even you speak to players now, you know, even if he was still at Rangers now, naturally he'd be the best goal scorer. He just always seemed to know where the net was. His touch, his composure, um, some of the goals he scored were fantastic um, and you know, an amazing career. Um, but then, did he win anything down in England? Uh, it was a good shout, actually. I mean, uh, I, I don't think he would have. I don't think he would have. Actually, I can't think. Was there a cup um, that he might have won? That was so, a, so that's that's why shout. that that league medal will mean all the more to him. Because if he hasn't won anything, because as football players, you want to you want to achieve things, you want to win things, and um, you want to be successful. And now, while he's had a fantastic career and been hugely successful in terms of goals and stuff, you want you want medals in your cabinet, you know, and. and um, so that, that league title will be extra special for him, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm just looking at here. Sometimes you get a list of the things that he's achieved, or his honours, uh, and he won the League Cup with uh, Spurs. Yeah. So that's something he'll be able to take away with him, which is uh, is really, really good. Premiership and uh, runner-up with the Rangers in the League Cup as well. Um, but he was Tottenham's Player of the Year. Um, and also the Sunderland Supporters Player of the Year and he's got an OBE, Ruffy. And uh, I think when you consider, um, you know, what uh, I was speaking to Jamie Murphy not that long ago and he said in the dressing room and just going around the corridors of Ibrox, he was a top drawer player and had time for everybody. Yeah, well, that's what you look for when you bring somebody like that to the club. You, you, the influence they'll have, you would hope, when the younger players coming through and, and everybody looks at your record. And if you, the youngsters were to look at his record and see the goals that he scored, particularly with Tottenham, were absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure at the time at Rangers, I'm sure there's lots of kids, up and coming kids. And, and I think he, I do believe he took part in all the youth set up in the academy, went along and, and watched them playing and everything. So, yeah, that's the kind of guy you want about a club. Yeah, and thanks to Tim Main who pointed out he played for Toronto FC as well. Oh, nice. So, um, well done, Tim. It's nice to uh, get a, a real uh, flavour of all of the uh, teams that he played. Yeah, no, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It's still good to see all the play teams he played for. Don't worry about, don't worry about making mistakes. It's, 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 uh, well, they play in the MLS. Yeah, absolutely, so. but par for the course. Um, we all make mistakes, Ruffy, at times. Um, you uh, did in 1982 when I thought we were going to go on and beat Brazil, but suddenly you hadn't prepared for Zico. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we never forget. <laughs> Ten years, I still weather him for it. It's fantastic. Um, although, I have to say, 
although you can't find your Zico shirt, still not found it? No, it's gone. No, it's gone. Gone? It's gone, yeah. And, uh, and but you've still got your Kubias shirt. Kubias is in the, on the wall, yep. signed on the wall. Absolutely magnificent. I'm hanging on for that. Um, just, hope the other, just hope the others don't make a claim. A uh, couple of things before we go, lads. Um, first of all, if you want to win yourself an iPad, uh, Kerry has the details. You can win this fabulous iPad by entering our competition. As Scotland prepare to play in two international friendlies, all you have to do is tell us about your favourite Scotland goal in the comment section below. For an extra chance to win, log in to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell for the latest notifications of our unique content. The winner will be announced by Scotland legend Alan Ruff on Monday's football show at 4pm on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck! Yeah, you see, Richard, we give things away. We give pe we give prizes back to the people who are watching us. I mean, that's the, the great thing about this show. Well, I would imagine that's why you have so many subscribers on your your YouTube channel and the, the app. Yeah, don't see much coming. Don't see many things given away with Jonathan Sutherland when he's on with him, do you? I mean, they're no. not giving away much, are they? No, no, I haven't seen anything. No, no nothing. No, no, I haven't no. seen anything at all. <laughs> exactly, you know? Ruffy. We're giving away yeah. prizes. Fantastic. Any chance you can have a word with him? See if they can, <laughs> see if they can give something away. Um, what about uh, what about Ryan Porteous um, he's he, he's come out actually I mean he's come out on his Instagram and he's raging uh, that he's got an increased uh, ban um, but he's basically said it was a stonewall penalty however eyes clearly focused on the ball a genuine attempt made yellow card uh, going by the rules of the game well uh, yellow card going by the rules of the game if you make a genuine attempt for the ball but if you can clearly see that the Aberdeen player is standing between you and the ball, you must know that swinging your leg full force, you're going to take him out of the game. So it's one of those where I think he's tried to make it look like he's going for the ball, to, um, so he only does get booked. But I thought, initially when I seen it, I thought he's been unlucky. He's went to clear it, the Aberdeen player's nipped in, and he's brought him down. And then when I see it back, I think, no chance. You can see the ball is the other side of the player. No, <laughs> it's literally impossible for him to kick the ball without kicking through the Aberdeen player. Um, and I thought it was a red card. He was obviously due to serve three games because of his, his disciplinary this season. And they, they tend to do that when you try and question them and, and challenge it. Um, if you fail, they, they add a game on. So yeah, I don't know if it was his decision or the club's decision, but it was a poor one. Um, by him at the time, and it was also a poor one by them for them to appeal it. Yeah, it's a strange one. I never thought it would stretch all the way to Thursday. Obviously, Ryan still feels aggrieved by it all, but I, I've looked at it, Ruffy, and from yeah. every angle, I think to myself, yes. I mean, apart from the Aberdeen player not having a leg to stand on <laughs> once he's been smashed, uh, he hasn't got a leg to stand on. No, they've tried to hang on to a rule book. You know, somebody immediately after it's happened has looked up a rule book and said, oh, wait a minute, if you attempted to play the ball, you could go off with this. And Sean Maloney came out with it right after the game. So somebody's obviously whispered in his ear that this is in the rule book. And uh, unfortunately, as Richard said there, you have to apply the, the rule book uh, as you see it. Sometimes it's not what it's written down in a book in black and white. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks to so many people who are posting in the message board here uh, about their favourite Scotland goal. If you can, go onto our Facebook page. It's pinned to the top of the page and you can put it in the section there as well and you'll be in the hat if you hit the subscribe button. If you haven't done it already, then you're also in with a chance uh, to win the iPad. So thanks to Kerry for mentioning that. Uh, just one little thing that caught my eye that I wanted to get your thoughts on. Um, Callum Davison says the state of the St Johnston pitch is maybe now, you know, it's been focusing his attention on the type of player that he puts in uh, to the team. Um, can you understand where he's coming from with that? Certainly can. You know, we can we suffer the same. We've got good f football players, and I think Callum, sh the team showed last se season, they've got good football players. Um, they like to, to move the ball around the pitch. You know, I, I know they lost Alan McCann and Jason Kerr, who were huge for them in terms of their ball retention. Um, but if it's a bobbly pitch and you can't pass it through the thirds, sometimes you just got to go long, make it a battle, and in that case you need to put in players who are going to dig in for you, are going to win headers, win tackles, put their body on the line, um, and, <coughs> and make the game ugly if you want, and, and get through it that way. Um, I think St Johnson kind of used to be that, um, and then when Callum came in, they, they kind of came away from that, and they actually played you know 3-4-3, 3-5-2, they played really good football at times, but I think when the surface dictates... I don't think you know you've got to, to play for the surface. You can't just think, oh no, I'm going to I'm going to carry on regardless and play the way I want to play. You need to you know if, if it's a dry, bobbly pitch, you need to kind of change the way you play. And if you need to change your personnel, then then so be it. I would imagine you'll you'll probably put in his his biggest team possible and and try and play for set pieces. Yeah. Do you think Nundee are gone? 
Yeah, I think I think they're gone now. Yeah, I think that was a huge weekend with St Johnson winning so late on, Callum Henry's wonder goal, and um, and then you know Dundee not being able to hold on for anything against Rangers. Yeah, I think they're gone now. Yeah, yeah. Um, momentum, mm -hmm. feel good factor, all of those things. Suddenly, players back from injury, it's all key uh, to the running now. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, who's it choice who Johnson got next? Uh, I would I would think uh, initially they play one of the old firm, do they not? Maybe yeah, Rangers. Rangers yeah. Well, it's not a game you would want, really, after <laughs> getting, a, getting a, a win, because, uh, as, as Richard will tell you, the Monday morning dressing room would be bubbling. You know, everybody would be looking forward to training. The whole week would be good, but you would be looking not a fixture uh, like Rangers. You know, momentum you, killer right there, yeah, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So. Well, to be fair, by the way, Ruffy, I mean, the... Uh, that, that that game uh, where Henry got the two goals, a huge conference booster for them. Uh, so they'll have um, Livingston at home first and then Rangers away. Oh, no, I think Livingston, that's, that's... Beatable? Yes, definitely. I mean, the, the, you saw the boy Henry will be... Sorry, Celtic. I don't know why I said Rangers. So St. Johnson and then Celtic away. No, talk about St. Johnson. Yeah. No, who's St. Johnson have got? Yeah, St. Johnson have got Livingston at home and that's then Celtic right. away. No, that's great. You yeah. know, I think that would be a good Three one. points? Yeah, I think they'll be looking for three points. Obviously, the boy Henry will be buzzing. He'll be desperate to get on the part as a play. You can see the celebrations at the end of it. That, that says it all for me that yeah. the next week has to be a win. It was some goal. Uh, try not to ask me those things right at the tail end and I've got to go and look it up, by the way, uh, Ruffy. You do my head in. Um, uh, another thing that does my head in, Ruffy, is this is the smartest you've ever been on the show. It looks absolutely magnificent. And the only thing that deflects away from you looking ultra smart <laughs> is the fact that your man here has got, has got a luminous well, training yes, shoes well, on. As Apparently you... they glow in the dark. Now, I don't know about you, Ruffy, <laughs> but I, I certainly would not be wearing really glow in the dark uh, training uh, shoes no. in the area I live. No, in our days when you're trying to hide for your mum and dad, you wouldn't want to use glow in the... Because they find you in the cupboard or something like yeah, that. Thing you but, no. You'd be hiding in your own cupboard. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> By the way, the other thing, yeah, about, you know, the reason why I would not wear glow in the dark training shoes is because my mates would tell me the last thing you want is for somebody <laughs> spotting you when you're trying to get away. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Right? But as you know, this is usually a Thursday. It's usually uh, Tam Cowan Day. Yeah. You no, know, he has a hoodie and he just comes in, you know, his hat and everything. But, you know, when you told me Richard was coming, I had to get into Ralph Lauren. So, <laughs> <laughs> and buy a couple of shirts. So. Yeah. And, and amazingly, by the way, I may as well mention it <coughs> just as we get ready to finish. Happy birthday. Happy 50th birthday to our old pal Katrina Harvey. Yes. She was 50 at the weekend. Um, I know, Ruffy, that you missed the, the, the big party at Oran Moore. I didn't. I went in there. Uh, and had a great time to the wee small hours of the morning as well. 50 years, uh, I worked with her at STV, she's a great girl. Fantastic, you know, I was sorry I missed that, and I was sorry we never got a result for her, because she's a big Patrick Thistle fan, massive yeah. Patrick Thistle fan, as her dad was, you know, they used to come to all the games. Yeah, absolutely, if you could look down there and just wish Katrina a happy 50, she'd love that, Ruffy, because you're a Thistle legend, Yes, she's a big Jags fan. I'm terribly sorry uh, I missed your party, uh, but I'm sure we can make that up sometime later. Lots of good times, obviously, at all the places we work together at, and uh, I'm sure you would have a great time. If he doesn't get home at four o'clock in the morning, that must have been a good night. <laughs> it was. It was a good night. But the mere the mere fact you said you were going to make it up to you fills Richard and myself with dread. But, but nevertheless, um, happy 50th, Cats. Uh, thank you to so many of you posting messages and of course uh, telling us your favourite Scotland goal. Hopefully you're in with a chance of winning the iPad. Fingers crossed on that. Hit the subscribe button. The figures are going up and up and we're so delighted that so many of you realise we're exclusively live on YouTube Monday to Friday uh, from 4 o'clock till 5 and even if you miss it, download the PLZ Soccer app and you'll get all the breaking football stories as well as being able to watch our unique content right at your fingertips. Doesn't get any better than that. Thanks to Ruffy. Excellent to have Richard with us again in the studio, and uh, I'm almost certain he will be back now um, for the end-of-season party, Ruffy, because he missed the Christmas party, but he'll be back for the end-of-season party. Yeah, the end-of-season party is usually a better one, isn't it? It, it is. starts at 10 in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And now Richard's well, as long like, as my season's <laughs> over, I don't know. I'll just say, and now Richard's just going to text and make sure that his better half allows him out from 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> anyway, from Richard Ruffy and myself to you, thanks for watching.